Hello everybody and welcome back to Living the Florida East Coast. My name is Andrew Pinch and I'm a local realtor here on the beautiful Florida East Coast. And in today's video, what I wanted to do is have the most comprehensive, in-depth, a to Z guide on the internet right now about living and relocating to Vero Beach, Florida. Before we get started, the first thing I wanted to talk about too is that the fact that I am a realtor here on the East Coast of Florida. My name is Andrew Pench, and if you have any questions or concerns at all before making that relocation down here to the Florida East Coast, make sure to give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email. Also, we opened up a brand new website, so it's FL eastcoast.com so fleastcoast.com that's going to have where you can search for your properties uh, you know get all sorts of information market snapshots of everything having to do with the florida east coast from melbourne down to stewart we cover it all let's go ahead and dive into the video right now first thing i wanted to discuss is the fact that the nickname for Vero Beach is the Hamptons of Florida. So I'm not from the Hamptons. I've never been to the Hamptons, never visited there. I don't know anything about it, but if you are from there or if you have visited there or know just kind of a little bit about it, that is the biggest comparison that the Floridians here, the locals here give to this area. So I'm guessing, you know, maybe has an exclusive feel, uh, you know, here on the Barrier Island. This is probably what they're referring to when they mention that. Also, this is where the tropics begin. So whenever you're looking at it on a map there, Vero Beach at the very start of that East Coast part, that is where the tropics are going to be beginning in the state of Florida and then continue south from there. So that's really a kind of a big little highlight there. Also, not too crowded. You can see behind me today, it is a Tuesday morning, approximately about 10 a.m. So all the room to roam. Uh, plenty of space between me and the other people who are sitting here on the beach and um, lots of main beaches to choose from, public access, no tolls to get over the bridge, no tolls to park. Uh, you do have a two hour parking limit when you're here. Alrighty guys, so we made it to our first stop. We just walked straight on over from the beach to where we are now. And where we are right now is on Sandfly Lane on the Barrier Island in the residential area. So just take a minute to enjoy all the natural beauty that we have here. Um, you know, you've got the flowers over here on the left, the canopy roads. And unfortunately, I've not been able to find much like this on the mainland to kind of compares to this area. So this really is restricted to the island only. So now let's kind of talk about if you decide to buy here, what's gonna be nearby. So golf cart distance, walking distance, biking distance, pretty much everything that you could want if you decide to buy in that central beach area, kind of where I am right now, it's gonna be all your local shops, boutiques, uh, up and down Ocean Drive. You've got Casey's Place, which has been there since the 70s. You've got Chelsea's on the beach, which is off of Cardinal Drive. Uh, you've got El Cid, everything. There's a ton of different little places to choose from that are just walking, driving distance. And those are all just restaurants and bars. There are a lot more you know, to choose from. There's a lemon tree breakfast place, T just really tons of other options that are gonna be within walking and driving distance. So the beaches, of course, very spread out, you know, not gonna to be too crowded, too overcrowded like you have in the Cocoa Beach because with Vero Beach, you're really limited to only the residents here and the visitors. So there's not a big tourism draw. You know, there's nothing like Universal Studios, Disney World that's drawing people here. Also, you don't have a big major city that is within the center of Florida. So between here and Tampa, there's really kind of a low period where there's not a lot going on, no big city that has to share that beach with it. That really kind of dials down the traffic, the population too. So very easy, very convenient, beautiful area to call home if you decide that Barrier Island is where you absolutely have to relocate to. All right, so now let's go ahead and make our stop over to the next main area in Vero Beach, and that's going to be Miracle Mile Plaza. Just about a five minute drive from here. All right, so now we made it over here to the Miracle Mile Plaza, and I wouldn't necessarily call where I am right now is being the heart of the Miracle Mile Plaza, because I'd probably be getting ran over by cars right now because it is a very busy plaza um, but a lot of main things a lot of you know major shopping centers and everything are located here on this area so you've got bonefish grill panera bread Publix. you've also got if you're into you know more of the organic shopping if you have a whole foods where you are but you don't you know you can't find that here in Vero Beach well we do have the fresh market that is here in uh, you know in the American Mile Plaza so banks everything that you need is all going to be within here also the residential area lots of old Florida this is near the Royal Park area the McCanch Park area 
So a lot of the houses here date back to the you know, early 50s, 60s, maybe even a little bit before that. And um, they have more land to them. They're more spread out, more character uh, than you would find with a lot of the new construction. The cool really thing is about this place is that there's still a lot of mom and pop shops. We've got father and son electronics over here, Seventh Avenue Studio, Century Boutique Consignment, Coco's Consignment. So this is all kind of this strip right here. But when you go behind that, that's when you start getting access to you know, the Publix Plazas, the Fresh Market, the Wells Fargo's, the major banks and appliances. But if you see behind me here, this is all the residential area. So all walking distance, biking distance, driving distance. There's easy sidewalks here to get to and from. So very convenient, very nice little area. This is all just within five minutes of being from the beach too. So I hopped in the truck. I was here in five minutes. Very easy to do. I don't want you to think that because you're trapped on the island, you're not trapped. You have a toll-free bridge, two bridges actually, 17th Street and the Barber Bridge that will take you straight over to this area and bring you here in five minutes. You can probably hear the plane above me too because we do have the Vero Beach Regional uh, airport, the Piper Airport there too. So I, that easy, I walked from shopping, restaurants, dining, uh, boutiques, to residential here behind me. So very easy to do, nice little location. Definitely something that you want to put up on your wish list here. Uh, if it is looking for more character, if you're looking for more character with your home, uh, just know that it does come more pricier than you might think as far as buying these houses. A lot of the homes, the classic homes in McCanch Park, even if they need a lot of work and a lot of updating, can reach close to a million dollars, if not a little bit over, just due to the historical fact, the desirability of the neighborhood and being close distance to these sort of things that they have to offer. So this was kind of our second stop on it. This is the America Mile Plaza. So next, let's go ahead and run on over to the downtown Vero Beach area, another historical district, which I think you'll like. Alrighty, so now we made it to one of my favorite spots in Vero Beach. This is gonna be the downtown area. So right now I'm walking past Post and Vine, great little uh, dinner place with some lights above it, sometimes that live music going on, that sort of thing. So this is a really cool area, another historic district here in Vero Beach, dates back to a lot of the early times whenever Vero Beach was, um, you know, was first developed and a lot of new shops, new restaurants, everything is kind of gentrified and became of this area. Kind of a lot of places have changed hands, but still a lot of the classics and the things that people love about Vero Beach are still here. So one of my favorite spots to go, and this is as soon as they open up, cause it is still pretty early in the morning, is gonna be here at Taco Dive. So Taco Dive, one of my favorite spots here. You got Post and Vine, like I said, Southern Social, uh, Threads Boutique, so consignment stores, the Painted Frog, that's where you can go and sip some wine, paint some different paintings or whatever it is that you want to do, so wine and sipping. But also you are, in this area, just real quick for a point of reference, we are across the street from the Freshman Learning Center. So this is if you are in Vero Beach High School, you're in ninth grade, you get to go to the Freshman Learning Center that's right here behind me. And the residential area here too is not too far off from where we were before at Miracle Mile Plaza. So we were in the, the truck literally three minutes while, while driving over here. So three minute drive, the McCanch Park area, the Royal Park area, all still within driving distance. Again, this is like the old Vero Beach Theater. You've got coffee shops like 1420 Coffee Shop. You've got Rio Cafe, Vero Prime. Uh, you can also see here also some kind of local little hints there too. So if you know what you're looking at, you've got a lot of different things here on this mural. Really cool historic ties to all of Vero Beach, all up and down downtown, neat area. You can know and see that the culture's here. They also closed down the 14th Avenue street. So this is the street that they closed down whenever they have the Hibiscus Festival, when they have a lot of arts and crafts festivals, all sorts of things like that is all going on on this street, this main road right here. So 14th Avenue, downtown, Great little area, definitely recommend checking it out. So let's go ahead and move on to the next area, and that's going to be the Indian River Mall area. So where I am standing right now is one of the more major areas for a lot of the new construction going on. So if you're looking at, you know, Waterway Village, for instance, a very popular choice. If you're up north and looking at uh, High Point for GHO, anything kind of near the central western part of Vero Beach, this is going to be your main area. So I've got the Indian River Mall to my back uh, behind me here. 
And if you visited Vero, you know, heard rumors about it, that the mall is not necessarily as lively, popular, there's not a lot of, uh, it's pretty dried up, then you'd be pretty correct with that. Now there is still a few remaining shops there, but it's nothing too impressive. We still do have the Dillard's, the JC Penney's, and then also other smaller boutiques and restaurants. There's a church there, which I go to, also a preschool, which Cannon goes to now, uh, called Oceans Academy and Oceans Unite. But the major part of this is gonna be the surrounding area. So we've got Burlington over there that I was just in front of. I'm standing in front of Bell's Outlet. There is, let's see, Carvel Ice Cream, Panera Bread, the Target. This is where your home improvement's gonna be. So your Lowe's, your Home Depot. You've got Chipotle, Chick-fil-A, everything in front of us here dollar stores, and then just plenty of other smaller, you know, smaller businesses up and down throughout this plaza. So this surrounding area of the mall is not going to be, you know, kind of a dead space. All right, so now that you have a kind of a feeling as to what's here, let's talk briefly about the residential areas that are around here. So when you get this far north, and West Vero. So this is off of State Road 60. You've got the outlets out there. And then also this is all the major, you know, kind of infrastructure that's around the area. When you get here, it's more so going to be HOA neighborhoods, uh, gated neighborhoods, more land, more space. If you go west of 58th Avenue, that's whenever you have these big, you know, acre plus, five acre parcels of land. That's all gonna be within close driving distance to where we are now. Walkability to here, there's hardly anything that's gonna be easily walkable to this area. You do have to cross a lot of major roads like 58th Avenue, State Road 60 to get to this place. So it's more driver dependent than it is walkable, but you can still do that. So I used to ride my bike over to the gym, which is over by the mall here. And it would take me, you know, less than five minutes to do so. And that's off of 12th Street and 58. Biking distance, yes, you can do it. Just know you're gonna have to cross those major highways. And that could be nerve wracking for a lot of people. So I tend to stay away from that. Kind of wanted to talk about just briefly about the outdoor activities you have to choose from. So real quick little overview, the First thing, you know, this is a very popular boating spot, so we have to talk about the boat ramps. We've got three major boat ramps, the Oslo Park, the Riverside Park, and then also the uh, the Memorial Island boat ramp too. So Riverside's gonna have the most options. I would say between like four to six private boat ramps there, along with a lot of private kayak launching. That's also where the rowing club is. So if you're interested in the rowing club or into rowing at all, they row up and down the Indian River Lagoon there. Oslo boat ramp is more for the smaller vessels, shallow water vessels, and for flats fishing in the Oslo uh, flats. And then also the Memorial Island boat ramp, that's gonna be one of my favorite ones there too. So you can launch up to three at a time. It is just one uh, boat ramp there with plenty of parking. And if the parking's filled up, there's overflow parking in the field. Now also being here in Vero Beach, we're in between two major inlets. We've got the Fort Pierce Inlet to our south and the Sebastian Inlet to our north. So if you ever wanted to, for any reason, if you're going offshore fishing, very easy access from Vero Beach. Even launching here, there's not a far drive, maybe about a 15, 20 minute cruise, depending on which, uh, you know, which kind of boat that you're taking to bring you from Vero Beach to either one of those inlets. So we're kind of in the middle point there. Also golf, lots of other golf activities uh, and golf courses to choose from. So you've got the Sandridge Golf Course. That's gonna be the biggest and most popular choice. Point West is gonna be a private uh, or actually publicly open uh, golf course there out west of Vero Beach. Vista Plantation, Vista Royale, one of my personal favorites. You've got three nine hole courses to choose from there. So that's all, you know, a bunch of things there too. Tennis courts too. So we've also got tennis clubs. Uh, my buddy Adam that I went to high school with, he actually hosts the Indian River, I think tennis club here in Vero Beach. So ever interested in tennis, make sure to hit him up. Outdoor activity is really limitless here in Vero. I mean, I can start naming off hundreds, but I just want to really touch on the main ones, which is going to be golfing, boating, access to the inlets, the parks here. The fact that we also have Hummison Park too. So we've got Hummison Park, which is uh, on the beach. If you ever wanted to take your kids to a playground, have a public park there too. So without going into too much detail, that's kind of the spread of activities, outdoor activities that we have 
And next I wanted to talk about the school zones. All right, so now talking about the school zones and the different options that we have here. So first things first, we're gonna start from elementary and work our way up. And one of the facts about Vero Beach is the fact that elementary school, you have a lot more options to choose from. You've got Beachland Elementary on the beach, Roseland Magnet School, Osceola Magnet School, and maybe possibly even uh, you know, tons of others to even choose from there. Lots of other private options, things to choose from, from K to fifth grade. You know, everything's gonna be highly ranked for elementary school. There's hardly anything that you'll find in Vero Beach that's not either a four out of five or five out of five there. Middle school, your options shrink a little bit more. So you've got the uh, Oslo Middle School and Gifford Middle School. So those are two. And then you've also got the, I believe it's the Imagine Center. Uh, and then Storm Grove Middle School, so three or four to choose from there. So that is gonna be covering your middle school. High school is also just gonna be limited to one to two options. So you can choose to go to Indian River Charter, which is here connected to the campus that I'm sitting at, or of course the Vero Beach High School. A lot of people, whenever I get phone calls, sometimes they don't have the best thing to say about the school zones here in Vero Beach or in Indian River County. But I beg to differ. I mean, we're ranked number 12 out of 64 different school zones. Any River County takes number 12. So no, we didn't make the top 10. No, we're not in the top five, anything like that. You know, I went to the public school zones here. I went to Charter, also Vero Beach High School, Gifford Middle School, and uh, Osceola Magnet School. So I did the public school system growing up. It was completely fine. Turned out okay, I think. I really wouldn't be worried to send Cannon through that. So now, and that's my son there too. If you, if this, this is your first time to the video, he's my 17 month old son. Private school options too, you've got Masters Academy. That's gonna be more towards out the, uh, or towards the mall area there out west of town. You've also got St. Edwards, which is on the, you know, on the barrier island there. It's gonna be St. Edwards. I think that's gonna be the top dollar as far as dollar amount to send your child to public or uh, to a private school. K through 12, they're both K two uh, through 12 options. Then also we've got St. Helens too. So St. Helens is another one. Uh, kind of there near the downtown, more historic district. So that's a private Catholic school if you choose to do that too. I'm sure I'm missing others. Just giving you a brief overview of the rankings, the different school zones to choose from and things of that sort. Oh, and then one thing I forgot to mention, even though I'm here, is the fact that you have the Indian River State College, which is a four year university that you can decide if you wanted to get your bachelor's degree. This is a place where you can go and do that. They also have a great nursing program too. So anyone that's interested in learning how to, you know, go to a good nursing school, Indian River State College would be one of my top picks. All right, so now I wanted to move on to other things to consider about Vero Beach and its proximity to other things. So airports, if you're going to be traveling a lot for your job, if you need to have easy access to airports, Vero Beach may not be one on your top list, honestly, if you if that it is that important to you and if you're gonna be traveling that frequently. So proximity to it, we do have our own private airport. We've got uh, Piper Airport, which is mostly single engine uh, prop planes that you'll see coming up here. But we did have the introduction of Breeze Airways. So Breeze Airways is gonna be going to Hartford, Connecticut, Norfolk, Virginia, and uh, Westchester, New York. So we've got three of the major stops there for Breeze Airways. And I think a lot more is going to be introduced as the airport grows and as the population of Vero Beach grows. But proximity to other airports, you're about a 1.5 or one and a half hours away from Orlando, maybe about an hour 15 to hour 25 minutes away from West Palm Beach. You've got a uh, little bit under two hours for Fort Lauderdale. So those are all easy options if you are traveling pretty infrequently and those drives don't really, you know, if you don't blink an eye at, at two hours or less in the car, which I know a lot of people from the city really don't, it is an easy drive and it's a toll free drive for a lot of them too. All right, and last but certainly not least, let's go ahead and talk about the day trips that you can take from Vero Beach. So uh, we've already kind of touched on a few. Orlando, if you're going to Universal, Disney World, SeaWorld, whatever it may be, or if you just decide to go to the downtown Orlando area for all the shopping, outlets, whatever else that they have, that's gonna be within about an hour and a half away. Also, you can commute pretty easily to the other coast. So if you ever wanted to go to the West Coast over to Tampa, Venice, Florida, Naples, that's all gonna be about two and a half uh, hour drive-ish from Vero Beach here. So that's an easy drive across State Road 60. Toll free, easy to do, nice drive. Where we are on the map, um, where Vero Beach is. If you pull up a map, you see it, 
It's very central to the rest of Florida. You know, you can access pretty much all of the major areas relatively easy. Also too, for like a little vacation, mini vacation, my wife and I still want to try this. Fort Lauderdale has a ferry that can take you to the Bahamas. So you can be there, you know, a little bit less than two hours from Vero Beach and then hop on a ferry and be in the Bahamas. So that's another cool little uh, perk you get from being close proximity to that. So you got the Bahamas, the Keys is an easy, easy drive, you know, a little bit over three hours there. So all very cool little spots. And that's kind of really my collection of thoughts of other things just rambling on as they come to the top of my head. All right, guys, so that really wraps it up. A to Z, my random thoughts, my organized thoughts, everything kind of put into one singular video, A to Z about Vero Beach. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, I am a realtor here on the East Coast of Florida. Uh, I cover everywhere from Melbourne down to Stewart. So if you have any questions or concerns or want to be represented, by a realtor here when you make that relocation make sure to give me a call shoot me a text or send me an email also we have a new website that i developed fleastcoast.com that's going to have a lot of different resources for you we're constantly updating the sold comps and this is where you can really kind of pull out the microscope and see what's happening in particular neighborhoods that you are interested in so thank you guys again so much for watching this video i hope to see you again next time thanks bye